Why are some parents and pediatric healthcare professionals disappointed with the opening of a recent episode of Bluey? Now, if you've heard about this in the media, unfortunately, that story seems to be distorted into people saying that the episode was fat shaming or fat phobic. And really, that is not what the primary concern is about the opening of the episode exercise. The larger concern is the impact of the message being sent to children through that part of the episode. I recently had a chance to do a live with Aussie girl Margie, where we talked about some of the issues with the opening of that episode, where the concerns lay, and really what we actually liked about the episode, because it is a genuinely good episode, with the exception of maybe the first 40 seconds or so. So let's take a look at the part of the episode exercise that has some parents and pediatricians feeling a bit disappointed with how Ludo chose to approach this topic. Oh, man. What? <laughs> Bluey! Why did you say, oh, man? Uh, I just need to do some exercise. Tell me about it. Mm. <sighs> oh, <laughs> found you. Why don't you just do some exercise? Same old reason, Bluey. You kids and work. Now, there are a few disappointing elements of this particular opening of the show. Namely, that Bandit is very down on himself and his appearance in front of his children. Same goes for Chili. And the other thing is, he basically just says, like, while grabbing fat off of his belly, that the solution is he just needs to exercise more. Now, this is a dramatic oversimplification of health, which is actually a pretty complex topic. And let's start on common ground here, because I think universally, we can all agree that exercise is a good thing. Exercise is good for our bodies. It makes us feel better, usually. And it generally leads to improved health outcomes. But exercise is just one small part of health because health is a comprehensive topic. So what actually helps with weight, as an example, is focusing on your diet. There are other elements of health that are equally important, like making sure you get enough sleep at night and making sure that you take care of your mental and emotional well-being as well. And instead, we open with Bandit feeling shame about how he looks physically, even though most of us would look at this cartoon character and be like, I don't see anything wrong with them. And expressing that shame in front of his kids and deciding that the solution is he just needs to exercise more. So where some people are feeling disappointed with this comes from the fact that this is a very popular show. And when we talk about disordered eating or eating disorders or body dysmorphia, those things don't just appear out of thin air. They're usually a byproduct of influences from parents, from friends, and from the media that we consume. And there is a very legitimate concern that the opening of this episode does not send the right message to children about health and wellness. This is actually a bit surprising because the show has talked about exercise in positive, normalized ways in other episodes. For example, in the Bad Mood episode. And they've also touched on some of the, the personal benefits of exercise, how it can make you feel better, how sometimes your body just needs to move in the episode Musical Statues. Can you play Crazy Pillow with me? I'd love to, kid, but I've been sitting down all day. I just need to go for a run. But instead, they chose to frame the beginning of this episode as a point of shame for Bandit, something that he feels shame about his appearance and he feels badly about the way that he looks. And so the solution then is for him to exercise, which again, dramatic oversimplification of the complex topic of health and wellness. Now, when I was on the live with Aussie girl Margie, who has a very thorough experience in exercise science, this was something that she went to school for and worked as an exercise physiologist for eight years, so she knows what she's talking about when it comes to this topic. And generally speaking, weight is hardly ever a measure that is used by medical professionals as an indicator of health. There are dozens, if not hundreds of ways to measure the quality of your health, and weight is usually not one that's very helpful. It's not a helpful measurement, and it's not helpful for motivation. And on that live, there were a couple of interesting points brought up in the comments that I wanted to address. Now, there was one person who was saying, what's wrong with the show addressing Bandit experience in game? And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think it's really good that we would have an episode that addresses the topic of shame, especially because, you know, Bluey has a really solid track record of taking complex, difficult subjects like death or bullying or divorce or infertility and treating them with care in a way that makes sense to both parents and children. But the thing is, though Bandit experiences shame in this episode, they never deal with that shame. They never deal with a healthy way to deal with it. Instead, he goes out and he tries to exercise. He doesn't actually process what those feelings mean or what that does in terms of how he sees himself or his body or his role in relationship with his children and his family. 
So while I would love to see Bluey do an episode that addresses the topic of shame and feelings of shame, this wasn't it. The shame existed in this episode, but they didn't ever actually deal with that sense of shame. Bandit never actually comes to terms with it. There were also a good number of folks who were saying, you know, what's the big deal? I don't see anything wrong with this. This was the most relatable part of the episode. We heard that a lot. This was the most relatable part of the episode. It felt realistic to have a parent who's like, oh, man, you know, I wish I could work out more. I wish I could exercise more. I wish my body looked different. And what I find so interesting about that is when we talk about health and wellness, and especially when we talk about weight, usually this is framed as a personal responsibility issue, right? And if someone is fat or overweight, is because they have failed in their personal responsibility tasks. But I would encourage folks to be a little bit more introspective because when you have dozens, if not hundreds of people in the comments saying that was the most relatable part of the episode to me, that was the part of the episode that I connected to the most. If we're all having that shared experience. That's not an issue of personal responsibility. That is a systemic issue because why are we all feeling that way? Why are so many of us feeling like we don't have the time and or the energy to do the things that we want to do to take care of ourselves in the way that we want to take care of ourselves. That is a systemic issue. And there were people in the comments who pointed out that you know, America is the most obese nation in the world. And when we look at that, it's like, why is that? America is one of the most productive, if not the most productive countries in the entire world. So we have this populace that's really good at working, that's really good at producing things for companies and, and for organizations and businesses. And we turn around and they are also the most obese. So you know, if in the most productive nation on earth, are, are you saying that all these people who are obese are lazy and failing at personal responsibility? It, it doesn't make sense, right? So what are some of the other systemic issues? And overwork is one of those. A lifetime of stress, a lifetime where uh, there's a lot of financial insecurity because of dramatic income inequality. So most Americans are actually a paycheck or two away from literally being homeless. And having that weighing over your head all the time leads to an amount stress that is not conducive to weight loss or health and wellness. Stress is one of the biggest things that would interfere with weight loss, right? If your body feels a lot of stress, it's going to try and hang on to weight a lot longer because quite frankly, your body is in fight or flight mode. And if you're going to be homeless, that is, that is a scary situation to be in. And not only that, current generations do not enjoy the same level of communal support for raising children that existed for previous generations. Previous generations typically were able to make enough for one person to consistently be home with the kids, and for there to be a community of people who helped raise children together. You really don't have that nowadays. So you have parents who basically have to play wonder people, where they're trying to be these amazing parents, these amazing partners to the people that they're with, but also who are trying to go out and work full-time jobs. And it just takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of energy. And at the end of the day, you just don't have much left for yourself. And that's not because you are failing in your personal responsibility. That's not because of an individual failure. That is because of the society and the situation and the community that you live within. Like America is the most expensive country in the world to raise a child in. Uh, healthcare is not subsidized by the government like it is in every single other industrialized nation. You get zero days of guaranteed paid parental leave after a child is born. We talk a lot about how much we care about kids, but one of the most effective things for very young kids, infants, newborns, is having a parent at home on an extended basis to build that relationship and take care of that child. And we don't even extend the courtesy of making sure that parents are able to do that when they have children. We also charge an arm and a leg for things like childcare. There's no subsidy for childcare. So we are looking at a situation where you can either spend a lot of money and feel the stress of paying virtually a mortgage payment on childcare. Or on the flip side, you have one person who stays home, which means you lose out on a full-time income that could be coming into your household. And not only that, that person is burning themselves out all day, taking care of a child that has really significant needs and wants and that requires a lot of energy from you. So at the end of the day, when you're done living this little child's life for them and helping them along, uh, you very rarely have something left for yourself. Again, that's not a personal responsibility issue. That is a societal issue. We are collectively failing. People like parents, as an example, and people who work full time, uh, people who are trying to collect a paycheck and aren't being paid what they're worth in a society that is increasingly becoming more and more expensive as more and more companies price gouge. And so when you look at the opening of this episode where Bandit is expressing shame about his body and Chili sort of does as well, where he's you know just very unhappy with his body, he's grabbing the fat, he's talking about how he just needs to move more. It's framing it as a personal responsibility issue when it's not. 
It's framing it as an issue of needing to exercise more when it's not. Exercise is to, to make your body feel good. Like your body is basically a vessel that takes you to places and helps you experience the world. And yes, again, universal agreement that exercise is a good thing, but it's only one small part of health. It really is just one small part of health. There is a rich body of evidence that shows that we actually have to think of health holistically and not just what you eat and how you move, but also how you take care of your mental and emotional well-being, how you take care of your situation. Now, I thought that Aussie Girl Margie made a really interesting point on the live, which is they could have done this opening differently while still maintaining the same type of idea. Like it could have been Bandit chasing the kids up and down the stairs, and they just completely out of breath and realizing, hey, I want my body to be able to do more. I should probably exercise a bit more so that I have more stamina or I have better you know, breath control, whatever it is. Uh, that would be a more significant opening that would communicate to kids that, hey, your body is worth taking care of. And if you want it to do things for you, you're going to have to train it to do those things, right? Exercise is going to help you do the things that you want your body to be able to do. But to frame it from the perspective of, I don't like the way I look. I don't like that I am fat or overweight or have a little extra fat around the middle. Uh, and, you know, that that is a reason to feel badly about myself. That is sending the opposite message that we want to kids. Like, and this is not saying like, hey, kids, go out and eat a bunch of junk food and things like that. It's literally saying, love the body that you're in. Take care of the body that you're in. Right. This is a long term play, because quite frankly, again, things like body dysmorphia, disordered eating, eating disorders, those don't just come out of nowhere. Those are learned behaviors, usually from very strong societal influences. And it starts with things like the media that we consume and the people that we're around and the messages that they send to us. So what I'm really hoping happens is Ludo will eventually change the beginning of that episode to something different, just that first 40 seconds, because here's the thing, and I know I said this earlier, but it's true. The rest of the episode is excellent. It's it's genuinely funny. There are some really great ideas in there. It honestly reminded me a bit of the Magic Xylophone episode, like the very first episode of Bluey, where you know he's playing the piano on Bluey's tummy. And, you know, how many of us that have kids and have watched Bluey have not then turned around and done that to our kids, right? I've played the piano on both of our kids' stomachs just because of that episode. And there are a lot of little game ideas in exercise that are really clever ways to incorporate kids into your personal exercise, into your fitness and wellness, and games that are just, like, really clever and fun. And I'm really looking forward to doing some of those with my daughters. We can incorporate both of them into the exercise that I do around our house, because it'd be a nice way to work it in so that I'm playing with them while also doing something good for me and the health of my body. But generally speaking, that's why some parents and pediatricians were disappointed with the opening of the episode of exercise. And I would love to know what you think. Is it a big deal? Is it not a big deal? I personally think that it is, but I'd be curious to hear your perspective as well. So just please let me know in the comments.